and needed some coins to build that dream team you guys have always wanted, make sure to head on over to my sponsor, Buy Madden Coins. They have the cheapest, the quickest, and most reliable coins on the market right now. Head on over to Buy Madden Coins and use code Poodle at checkout for 20% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. And today, I'm going to be showing you guys the Gauntlet Rewards and going over which is the best player to choose from the Gauntlet Rewards. Now, I think there is five total players. Now, guys, you don't know what the Gauntlet is. It is the brand new solo sequence that just came out from the Series 4 update that did happen yesterday, although yesterday didn't really count because Madden went to all hell yesterday. We could not play the game. We could barely do solos. We could barely level up. The servers went down. The Gauntlet stars won't work. I'm honestly going to be honest with you guys. I think I played Gauntlet about five times. I think I finished it about five times because I assumed that if I played them, although I wasn't getting stars, I assumed when it updated, I'd get all my stars. And sometimes I did get some stars, but other times it just never registered. So I easily played every solo 10 times each. It was ridiculous how many times I played yesterday, but it was definitely worth it because I did get the reward and here we are. We can make a video on it. We can still make something out of this, guys. This is the Gauntlet. The Gauntlet 2. Welcome back to the Gauntlet. Get ready to knock the rust off and put your skills to the test again. Earn 75 stars to upgrade the G1 Gauntlet 1 player. You received in the first Gauntlet. And earn 100 stars to acquire a new G2 player. Now, it is go it does go by tiers for rewards. I'll go over that in a second, guys. But before you get into the video, guys, it is a 25 days of food miss, as you guys already know. I will announce a giveaway winner in some video today. I did not get to it at the 10:30 video, I believe, because I was in a rush to make that video. Completely forgot. I will go pick one after. But all you guys need to enter is subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment down below the secret word you will hear throughout the video, and your console. Once you do all this, you're entered to win, guys. Let's get into the video. So the gauntlet two, honestly, was one of the easier gauntlets I played in a long time. Very simple to do. Rush for 99 yards on the first play. I think for max stars, it's very. So I run inside zone. I just cut it outside. You cannot do a ball carry move, so you better have some stick skill. Um. Some people had a lot of trouble with into the uprights or crossbars, guys. It's really not that bad. All you gotta do is that make sure your remote vibration's on, and you just aim it, and once you feel the first vibration, you, you just get perfect accuracy and you hit it. Because the vibration indicates that you're gonna either hit the post or you're gonna, you're gonna miss, right? The vibration of the kicking meter means that you're gonna miss the field goal. So, you wanna move over slowly until you feel the first hint of vibration. That means that you're probably at like the crossbar. Once you get past crossbar, it just vibrates viciously, which means that you're gonna miss the field goal. So a light vibration means that you're probably aiming at the crossbar. So as long as the wind doesn't really mess you up, you're going to get unlucky a few times because the wind will still push it back in a little bit. But not a bad spot to aim at. Just a, just a general tip because I know a lot of people are having trouble with this. I got these done in maybe like two attempts each. Really wasn't too bad because again, I kind of already knew that. I've learned from years past of missing field goals. Pretty much how to not miss a field goal is to make sure it's not vibrating. And these were pretty easy. The hardest ones are probably the last two. You don't have to play the last two though. If you guys want the expert token, eventually you will have to play the last one. But for the sake of getting your 78 pluses, your 12,000 coins, your 78 pluses, your 18,000 coins, your G2 upgrade token, and the Gauntlet Fantasy Pack, you, do, you don't actually have to play all of them. That's for these rewards down here. You only need 100, so I pretty much played the first eight or so of each, and I left the last two on all of them. That's pretty much how I, I attacked this. It seemed like the easiest way to go about this. Now, guys. The G2 upgrade token they did give us is used to upgrade our initial gauntlet players from the last gauntlet, like Ed Oliver, Leonard Fournette, Juju Smith-Schuster, and so on and so forth. So I'll probably end up upgrading, I think maybe Ed Oliver, because he's still a defensive tackle, is decent depth for me. But up to you guys, I think Devin White's one of the better options if you don't have Shazier or Lewis or Lanier. But I obviously have Lewis and Shazier, so I can't really use White, but I think he's probably one of the best options. And Juju's not horrible either. Now, we obviously got our fantasy pack. And I don't know who I'm going to take yet, but I did rank it. So I'm going to give you guys my my exact rankings. My issue is that I really can't use any of these players. So I don't want to take it yet until I buy my new players on my team. But I'm going to give you guys my overall rankings for what I think are the best options to take and who's going to help the most amount of teams. It comes out to your team though at the end of the day. So that's what the rankings are good for, right? Let's say I put a player here at one. But you have two of these guys already. Like you have guys that are better than him. So you can go to my second ranking, and that's gonna fall to second. That's kind of what the beauty of doing these are for you guys. So I'm gonna go over each player and then give you guys my rankings. I do have a lot of packs saved up. Don't worry, those are saved up for zero show. I have quite a few pack opening things to go over with you guys. Hopefully, when the zero show finally drops. So getting into the Gauntlet 2 fantasy pack, our first player is Marshall Yonda. Our second player is Emmanuel Sanders. Our third player is Jared Cook. Our fourth player is Terrell Suggs, and our fifth player is Xavier Rhodes. So let's start from the right here. Let's compare. Let's read the stats. So, man, Xavier Rose has 90 speed, 89 excel, 86 agility, 95 jumping, 90 play rec, 90 man, 87 zone coverage, 85, 95 press. Now, guys, the beauty of Xavier Rose here is that, yes, if you do not have any other great cornerbacks or you're kind of lower corner, he is a very, very solid option. 
He's all around, all around the board, can do everything. Great jumping, great man, great press. He's very physical, super physical cornerback. So I honestly recommend him. I think he's one of the better options to choose. The only issue with him is that he cannot be powered up. So you're gonna have to get, if you have lockdown though and John Madden, you will get him to a 90 zone, which means he will be threshold in almost everything. He'll be a solid, solid, solid shutdown man type corner with great physicality. He's not gonna be the fastest guy, but depending on your team, he might fit right in line with all that. Now Terrell Suggs, not one of my favorite options. 92 overall, 77 speeds way too low for an outside linebacker. 82 excel, way too low for an outside linebacker. 88 strength is good. 86 tackles a little low. 93 play rex great. 85 block shed is way too low for a pass rushing linebacker. 90 power move is great and 70 finesse move. Now here's the issue. 90 power move is good, but he can't block shed. Now right now with the way this game plays with stretch, you need your outside linebackers to be able to block shed. They have to have above 90. It's just it's just a given because with all the stretches typically your end will pick up the, the first block and then your outside linebackers will either get loose on the running back or they will have to block shit now if they're 77 speed first off he's gonna get beat to the outside or you have to overcommit and then he's gonna juke you inside there's really no winning when it comes to stretch here and then if you do get blocked you're most likely staying on that block long enough because with that speed you're never gonna catch up at least guys like lawrence taylor if they get blocked for a second and then they get off it they can still chase him down a little bit and if, if the, the running back has to make any moves you'll probably chase him down with terrell sucks he's too slow not really a fan of the Suggs, do not think he's one of the best options. Secret word for this video is cookie. Comment down below the word cookie, your console, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. Once you do all the things, you are entered to win the giveaway. Good luck. Enjoy the rest of the video. It's here. Now, Jared Cook, 84 speed, 70 strength, 92 catching, 87 catch in traffic, 89 spec catch, 86 short route running, 84 medium route running, and 62 run blocking. So, as per usual, Jared Cook card has decent athleticism, decent catching. Decent route run. He's always all around. Now his catching's better than usual. So what's funny is that back on his Raider days, he would always have a really high speed and a really bad catching and route running. But I guess now that he's gotten a little older, he's more of a savvy vet now. And if you guys do watch in real life, he has gotten a lot better catching. He's made some pretty great catches for the Saints. Pretty great. He's a pretty great weapon for the Saints this season so far. So I guess that's kind of how it's won. He's gotten a little older. He's not exactly as fast as he used to be, but he's gotten a lot better with his hands. So he's a, in my opinion, he's like a budget kittle. He's a budget kiddo because he's a little bit slower and he can't run block as well. And that run block is important, right? If you're not going to have run block, you better have like an 88, 87 speed. You're going to be able to run block. Kittle can do both, which is why I'm still going to probably stick with Kittle. But Jared Cook is not a bad like tight end too. If you needed one that can just go out there and run routes for you, not bad at all. Now, Emmanuel Sanders, I like Sanders in real life, but 88 speed is a little bit low at this point in the game. 91 jumping is great. 90 catching is great. 87 catching traffic is okay. 88 spec catch is good. 90 short running is great. 88 medium route running is okay and 90 88 deep route running is okay now he has the route running and the catching stats of a guy who should probably have like a 90 speed not an 88 now they cannot be powered up and they can be kept up but that will not be enough for his speed i do not think sanders is one of the better options i'd much rather use my g2 upgrade token on juju smith schuster and use him more than likely over Manuel sanders a decent card let's see if he has any after the catch stats that could save his card just a little bit let's see elusive is 85 87 ball carrier vision 83 spin 86 juke so he is decent after the catch nothing special now the final card we're going to be looking at is Marshall Yonda. Marshall Yonda is 6 foot 3, 91 strength, 93 awareness, 89 pass block, 90 pass block, power, 88 pass block, finesse, 91 run block. <coughs> Excuse me. 92 run block power and 89 run block finesse. So chemed up, he will have almost all the passing thresholds and almost all the running thresholds that covered. He will have almost pretty much all above 90 stats. He is going to be better than my David DeCastro, which is why I'm leaning towards him as one of my top options because what better than to get a free right guard, right? Lyman's always a position you want to take a free card out, in my opinion. Always one of the ones you want to at least look at or give an idea of because at the end of the day, it's a position you don't like buying if, and it's, he's good. He's a great card. Marshawn is always a staple on most Madden teams when it comes to Lyman. So I think he's really, really great. Now let's go check out his impact and his lead blocking first because that's always important. He's, uh, he's honestly not that slow either with the 79 XL. Now let's see what his lead block and impact block. Impact blocks a 90. That is solid. And is his lead block good? That'll sell me right there. His lead block is 880. So that's not great, but the impact blocking was pretty good. So if I had to rank him, starting from least to greatest, last place, I'm probably putting Terrell Suggs. If he had a Ravens on him, if he was a Raven, I would have put him on like third because you can put him on a Ravens team team. On a Ravens team team, he's going to be pretty good. He's going to be able to make up for a lot of things that the Ravens team team don't have. And yes, I know you can change him, but he's not power up. He's not power up available yet. So you cannot change his team just yet. Now, for the second to last guy, so Terrell Suggs number five. Number four, I'm going to have to put Emmanuel Sanders. Now, Emmanuel Sanders would have been a little bit higher had his speed or Juger spin have been a slightly higher. If his speed at 90, he'd be great, but 88 speed, too slow. There's tight ends with that speed at this point. 
and he's supposed to be a shorter guy a good route runner that has good speed and he does not really have any of that i mean that route running i mean you got guys like tory hill for free who are way better we have a lot of guys who fill that role in our team already i don't see him as a need we have plenty of guys with good route running this year michael Irvin, tory holt i don't have many examples on my team but trust me there's plenty now so that's this is five this is four number three i'm gonna put jared cook i would have put jared cook a little bit higher if his speed was like an 86 if it was an 86 i could have matched up Kittle's speed he would have beat him in catching would have lost some running blocking still a solid tight end guys if you don't have Kittle and you have no other tight ends right now jared cook is not a bad option at tight end he's decently fast can catch really well actually surprisingly makes can make plays can route run decently his run blocking does suck but we never really get jared cook cards for run blocking now for the final two i'm going to be putting xavier rhodes at number two now, I would have put Xavier Rhodes a little bit higher, but here's the issue. To get his zone to a 90, you're going to have to have quite a few things that not a lot of teams might have. You're going to need lockdown max. To get it above 90, you're going to need lockdown max, and you're going to need John Madden lockdown, or John Madden pass D. So, with all that, though, his press is going to be like a 98. He's going to be very, very good if you have all those things. Now, once he's able to be powered up, if he was able to be powered up, guys, he would be one of the better cornerbacks in the game. But the agility is too low. First off, agility is big for me at cornerback. It's too low. His excel is a little bit too low, and his speed's not the greatest either. I mean, at this point in the game, I think we need that minimum 92 speed. There's too many fast guards. There's Tyra Kill, Devin Hester, and stuff. You're not going to do anything against them. The press is great, though. I really do like the press. He's definitely one of the top options. And now, I think at number one, I'm putting Marshall Yonda. Now, Marshall Yonda and Xavier Rhodes are really close one and twos, guys. Like, you can go either way, depending on what your team needs. He's a depth position. He's not a depth position, but he is a lineman. He's probably one of the best right guards in the game, minus the new one that just dropped, which is, I believe, Larry Allen. No, right guard. I forget if right guard was Larry Allen. Yeah, I think it was Larry Allen. Larry Allen's at right guard. So he did just drop NFL 100 Larry Allen. But Marshawn is going to be one of the best options at right guard behind him. And he's free. You get him from the gauntlet. You could slot him in there. He's going to be a great run block and great pass blocker. And on Ravens team, teams that probably desperately needed a brand new upgrade to Marshawn. You cannot power him up yet, but when they do get the expert tokens and all that stuff is done, you can do the master sets. You will be able to upgrade him at some point. So don't, don't fret. You will have that chance. And you can also use your T2 upgrade token. So don't forget that. You can put that in. The way you do that is by clicking on your player your player from last gauntlet and just clicking on him and upgrading him like you're gonna power him up and you'll see right there exactly how to use it but guys that is about it for the video i hope this helped you guys i will not be picking mine yet i told you i'm probably picking yonda but i just want to make sure i don't need roads or anything even as a backup before i go into all this but that's about it for the video guys thank you so much for watching if you're new to the channel go down below enter the 25 days of food miss like the video comment down below that your console and the secret word that you heard and subscribe once you do those three things you are entered to win good luck boys enjoy the rest of your day hopefully i have the maximum level off for you at some point after this video I'm out. See you guys in the next video. Peace.